hotspots. That is such a big market. And if you think about it, it's very complement. The target audience for both the MMA market and the East market is pretty much the same. A majority of them. Now they have, with Apprentice, they have branched out into encrypted content. They understand what times we are living in, where everybody is consuming so much content. And having a novel content on your hand is like a trove. So definitely kudos to the vision of the management specifically. Coming back to what Prentice was for me in terms of my learnings. Uh, for me, uh, I think the biggest takeaway or the biggest, uh, the best thing that happened to me at Apprentice was I got to compete with individuals from across the world. And I'm not, I'm talking about average individuals. These are individuals who have excelled in almost all fields of their life. So definitely competition is something what really drives me and Apprentice gave me the opportunity to compete with in the world. As you mentioned, one has all of his things to the platter. When it also came up with the MMA thing, when Charter City Dong launched one champion, it wasn't just about MMA. It had its own Muay Thai bouts. It had its kickboxing bouts. So it was Definitely. more of a more packaged form of combat to the fans and fans were really excited to see this and with this apprentice yep. Chatri has always something new with working with him considering that also yep. and what was it working with Chatri Sikodang and the entire team of one championship? Now uh, I felt that um, I have been extremely, extremely fortunate to have the opportunity to spend time on the Chatri. And, uh, you know, the adage, passion drives you. Uh, I think, think something on the similar lines, which even Steve Jobs said that always follow your passion and led you uh, astray. That is so, so true in case of Chachi. One thing which comes off right off the bat when you talk to him is that this person is so passionate about whatever he does. From the way he talks, from the way he conducts his business, passion is central to what he does. Now, with that, he has a very sound business acumen as well in terms of the market wants, what he have, and how to portray the company market. So, definitely, an entrepreneur, it was the best that could have happened to me to be under such a situation. And uh, just conduct yourself in a situation, in a business environment, which is so highly volatile. I mean, especially in today's times. Business uh, markets are so volatile. There are so many uncertainties everywhere. Still getting out your way through that. And above all, above all, I think Mr. Sichurta is extremely humble in his conduct. And that is something that really touched me. That he's a man who got, it's a, it's a billion dollar startup, one championship. He's a man who is literally running the uh, livelihoods of so many places. And has has a company which is which is being viewed matches on championship are being viewed by millions all over the world and the numbers are still growing. Just imagine the kind of pressure this guy must be going through on a daily basis. That being said, always he is so humble with the consent in general. I mean, sometimes passion makes you very volatile, makes you a little intolerant, a little hasty at times. But in his case, he's always been very understanding and humble. So, I mean, that I really, really am about him, his humility. You and Chatri have got one thing in common that you guys both have been athletes in you know, like the earlier yeah. stage. Chatri has been into martial arts, yeah. you have football. So, doing that, yep. this kind of thing, like as you mentioned, this athleticism brings a kind of energy into your life that you canalize into yeah. the sector. So, you ask about these things yeah. about sports behind the scenes, like the Chris Kyodong did speak about the experience you had during early stage as athletes. I mean, yes, uh, I mean, not just me, uh, all of us as contest uh, contestants, we had access to Mrs. Uh, Sikyotong. Not a not very uh, not a lot of time because you know we were putting um, amidst so many rules and regulations. But whatever time he got, uh, started at talking about his experiences as an athlete, as a young entrepreneur, the problems that he faced as a youth, you know, father leaving him, the Asian financial, uh, Asian financial crisis, his time, the Wall Street. So definitely, he made it a point that he talks about his own journey. Not because he wanted to talk, but because 
us, we as contestants could learn what uh, he has gone through. So definitely there were moments with uh, our private life. The winner of the apprentice gets to work with Mr. Chakri Sitiodong himself. And considering that you are such a great entrepreneur from our country, do you have any special plans in your mind if you win the show? Do you get to see an event in India or one championship event? Maybe headlined by Ritu Fogata or something. Oh, definitely. Definitely, Raj. I'm telling you, if I am to win the apprentice, I'll make sure that India becomes the next big thing in Asia. That India, because see, we being in the sports industry for as long as I have, we have a treasure trove of talent. Where we fall short is that we don't have the adequate infrastructure behind that talent. I mean, in some sports like cricket, the infrastructure is world class. The management infrastructure. Other sports are still catching up. So definitely having some somebody like a one championship behind you and having the talent that we have in the country, it's the perfect combination. One championship has always put the spotlight on Indian MMA. I mean, India always had the talent, but it was kind of getting looked over before one championship yeah. came in. Now we have so many household figures. We have Ritu yeah. Fogart, who is a superstar right now. We have Pooja Tomar, yeah. we have Rajinder Mina, and so many other Indians. You are there representing India at One Apprentice. Do you think one is has put the absolute spotlight on Indian MMA, or do you think that there is still work that needs to be done? Raj, definitely, definitely, without a doubt, India is a big, big market for them. And uh, their, their strategy in terms of how they go forward, India is going to be, uh, play a very key role in that strategy. And hence, they have invested a lot in the Indian athletes, in getting a contestant from India for the apprentice show. These are all just part of their strategy. Because India is a big market for them and they understand that the culture in India is very, very similar to the culture of one championship in terms of the respect, honor, integrity. These are values which are very, very pan-Asian. And India, uh, like for example, Ritu Fogat. I just, just uh, you know, I've met Ritu Fogat at the competition and also had the opportunity to talk to her a couple of weeks back. So Ritu is like the upcoming star. She has already proved her mettle in at one championship. But of course, that's not the end of it. There are many more titles, many more victories that lay in front of her. And the other respective athletes that won, the Indian athletes. So uh, at this point, it's, I think as a country, we, it's, it's, a very, it's a moment of pride that more of, more of Indians are representing India on a global stage, a stage like one championship. And definitely, definitely going forward, India is going to play a major part in one championship. For sure. I mean, we're going to see more people like in, on the management side, for example, just straying a little bit off from your question. We already have so many management officials that are Indians. I mean, so many of the top, top management officials are Indians. Uh, Mr. Hari Vijayan, for example, and many others. So they already know that as Indians, like as a country, we can deliver, be it management or be it on field as athletes. So definitely, definitely, it's just a matter of time that we see more, like more Ritu Fogats representing India there. Coming back to One Apprentice, like obviously you are one of the toughest competitors over there. You've really got an experience. Thank Who you. do you think will be your tough competitor, the toughest competitor that you are going to face amongst all the other 15 contenders? See, you know, Raj, just taking a step back, talking a little bit about the athletes, uh, or about the contestants itself. There are, these are the 16 individuals who've come from literally across the world. I mean, this is the first time that uh, a non-scripted show has got such a multicultural crew or a contest, a candidate list. Now, uh, these different people have come from different walks of life. The only thing that connects all of them is their love for sports. But apart from that, if you talk about sheer business experience, there are people from the aviation industry. There are people from the tech industry. There are people from the sports industry like me. So the industries are so varied. There are people with so many different skill sets. But I feel my particular, like if you ask about me, who I feel that is one of the toughest competitors for me, I would say two people. One is Louis from Philippines and second would be Irina from Russia. I feel that both of them are very, very well-rounded as business individuals. 
I mean, they are physically fit for sure, without a doubt. But even on the business front, they are very well-rounded. So yeah, Louis and Irina for me. So considering that you have been an athlete, what do you feel like football? Like, do you feel that you could have been a martial artist? You have already been a football. What dragged your interest into martial arts? Maybe as a fan or maybe as an administrator because you're into the sports industry. What dragged your interest particularly into this no. combat thing? So Raj, not a, uh, something that not a lot of people know about me is that I am also a, a black belt in Shotokan, which is a, it's a form of martial arts. And that is something that I used to pursue. Karate is something that I used to do in my very, very uh, young years, teenage years, along with football. So martial arts was always something that I was interested in. But just because football was the, was the center, like the central thing that I wanted to do, so martial arts was always something on the periphery. But definitely, if not for football, I would have been either a boxer or an MMA fighter. I mean, as a sport, that is something that I would have liked to uh, choose, if not for football. Okay, so the, uh, the love for martial art actually was there always for you, but people couldn't notice that, like me, I didn't know that you were actually a black belt. It's great to know. So who were your favorite martial artists or your favorite fighters when you grew up watching this sport? I feel, I mean, for any child who's grown up in the 90s, Jackie Chan is the number one action hero. I mean, not a martial artist per se by profession, but like just somebody who represents martial arts. I mean, Jackie, I, I have grown up watching Jackie Chan's films. And I mean, the kind of things that he does, every child has fantasized at some point that what if I was Jackie Chan? So, of course. Like, but from from like somebody who plays the sport professionally, I would say GSP is somebody that I really look up to, and I had the opportunity to meet him in person. So definitely, I think he's one of the he was in his prime one of the most complete athletes, not just a complete martial artist, but a complete athlete. And like from the current batch of one championship, I feel there are two athletes which really interest my fancy. Uh, one is DJ Dimitri Johnson, Dimitri Johnson. The Mighty Mouse, and second is Brandon the Truth Wearer. I feel both of them are such such intelligent athletes. I mean, not just strong; they are world champions. That's for sure. They have proved their metal inside the octagon, but also outside. I mean, they are such successful businessmen. They are philanthropists. They are they have running multiple organizations. So I feel these two athletes are somebody I really look up to. Not just because of their physical prowess, not because they have won the championships inside the ring, but also their persona outside the ring. So like uh, when championship competes, when it came down to the market, it started competing with the absolute top tier figures like the UFC, Bellator, and it yeah. surpassed them to a certain extent. Like UFC is still trying to get into the Asian market. It plans to launch something yeah. in China, but one championship is already has got a hold of, not just in Asia, but it has reached yeah. USA. So how do you yeah. think as a business role model, it's different from the other organizations? I mean, obviously it has got a unique roster, it has got unique ideas, but as a business role model, how do you look up to yeah. one championship company with the other promotions? I definitely am of the opinion that one championship is one of the few organizations in the world, not just in the MMA business, not just in the sports industry, but in business as, as, as a whole. One championship, is led by individuals who are extremely, extremely forward-looking, who are visionaries in their own sense, and who are very agile. I mean, the moral, the business model of one championship is very intellectual property heavy and asset light. So because of that, it gives them a lot of room to move around. Like how many organizations could go from MMA to reality shows? These are two very distinct business models to esports. I mean, come on, esports is still somewhat similar to sports, but it's a totally different infrastructure. So just the current verticals that one championship has with MMA promotion, with the esports uh, vertical, and now with unscripted uh, entertainment content uh, stack. These three are so complementary to each other, but at the same time, they are totally different. So this is something that one championship brings to the table, their unique perspective and the way they run their business which no other, no other MMA promotion in the entire world does. 
one championship also has their new studio has their own studio they deploy a lot of time making documentaries movies i recently saw documentaries yep. on rich but i saw documentaries on ongla san so they're really putting yep. entertainment this documentaries and documentaries are not just for yep. entertainment they are they also preach the lifestyle that ritu forgot yep. or all the other legends have so what brought chatri secure down into yep. this concept like have you got any idea because he was totally focused into martial arts and he, mm-hmm. like suddenly one studio how did the idea came up and how did you look into that idea see i feel that this was not a random decision i feel that this was a the decision which was made years back and only the foundations of it were being laid all these years and in the last couple of years when the right time came that is when they launched one studios that is what i'm telling you these individuals are extremely extremely intelligent especially mr sachitom and uh, see it's a no brainer if you spout it content is always everyone phones netflix amazon and a plethora of ott platforms we are craving for more and more content at the same time there is not as much novel content especially the sports industry in the store you've got very very limited content so with one apprentice a content which is not just sports but also business in that's a very unique take both sports as well as business and reality show. so i mean content is the way forward and uh, you are uh, not let's not forget that one championship at the end of the day is a sports media property it is into mma promotion but it's a media property at the end of the day so getting into content was just a matter of time so coming back to one apprentice was it physically challenging for you or was it more of a mental challenge because you have been through both the phases physical and mental test so which was more demanding i think on both fronts and it's actually called the toughest test in history on both physical as well as mental it was so so bloody exhausting i mean shoot is a pretty different ball game altogether competing is something else but uh, reality television is very very exhaustive process the shooting of it and add to that the global pandemic that we're going through so definitely it was a lot of stress on the physical front on the emotional front on the mental front on the intellectual front it was a different ball game altogether because the competition the this challenges in the competition were structured in such a way that it tests all aspects of you as an individual not just your sales skills but also your conceptualization skills your marketing skills your operational skills all of that and you're competing against the best in the world so definitely it was very very exhaustive but for me it was more uh, mentally exhaustive than physically exhaustive like we saw you got to see men aston and so many other elite mma fighters into the show and obviously it was really a great experience i saw you on screen and i was like maybe i could have met them in person it's such a great thing to achieve now we really saw ben aston getting into the boxing ring with jake paul and it was quite evident he is yep. a reputed yep. striker and almost the entire boxing yep. family of them getting now so do you really favor this stance that yeah. youtubers or bloggers getting into the combat world do you feel they are taking somehow part of the glory from the fans or do you feel that it's completely okay if they have got the guts and they have got will and got the all to compete and there have been two decides you know raj it's a interesting case study yeah 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 but uh, you know going forward ben askin was jake paul to be a very interesting case study for all of us because uh, never has this happened before that an amateur fighter gets this is it's almost like a scene from rocky that a fighter from no i mean not nowhere but from a totally different field is fighting the top dog i mean ben askren is not a, at his prime right now but he was once upon a time and he's still a very big name in the mma world so the 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 line between legends between celebrities and the common man it is getting blurred every single day social media has done that and is doing that on a daily basis so i feel i feel uh, i don't think it was a bad thing i i genuinely don't feel it's a bad thing if any it has opened up a totally new avenue i mean something like this could happen again on a bigger scale just imagine i don't know some some another famous youtuber or challenging brand in the truth wearer 
and if it has to happen just imagine the publicity that will get the storylines from a pr perspective from the actual community perspective i don't think it takes away any glory from the fans a little bit here and there in the short term i think yes but on in the longer term i feel that uh, it opens up it, it really opens up the fields and uh, it it makes for good uh, content if anything Now we recently saw UFC brought back their fans into the arenas in USA, Florida, UFC 261. It was a full house show, but somehow India yep. or several other countries that are still dealing with COVID-19 and the still threat going on. Yep. Do you really like the idea of bringing the fans into the houses right away, or do you think that we could have planned this after some time? Because IPL is happening without any fans, Bellator is happening without fans, and so many yep. things are happening without fans. So, what's your take on it? I think uh, no. I, I personally think that we are still a very long way from the pandemic getting over, and getting the fans in. I don't feel it was the right move. If anything, if anything, this should be the time where technology is being amplified. I mean, what if we are virtual reality could be used for getting uh, giving the fans at home the in-stadium experience? or virtual reality or augmented reality i feel these two real technologies in particular this is the perfect time to implement them rather than getting uh, the the audience the fans into the stadium and definitely not in a place like asia i mean uh, like india for example or most of the asian countries most of us we are we still have some structural deficiencies and the sheer population especially in our country man so i mean for another 2 years at least 2 years i don't see and i hope we have no stadiums in the uh, we have no fans in the stadiums that's really great thing to know and obviously i i personally feel that people should implement and follow this thing because people who really sustain and prevail in asia only know how tough the times are so yeah it's really great to know see that's coming that So I would come back to personal life right now. You've done a lot of caps, as you all know. You've been a footballer. I just came to know that you have also been a martial artist, a navy, an entertainer on screen. So an entrepreneur. Which is the toughest role that you had? I mean, obviously you have found success in all of it. You had your own struggles, I'm sure. You had your own journey in all of it. But which part was? I mean, which role did you feel that okay, I had to walk an extra mile for it, or okay, this is the toughest thing that I'm doing in my life? Like being an entrepreneur or being a martial artist, which was? Now, personally, Raj, I feel that uh, here, here, the most difficult thing. See, I, I'll, I, okay, before that, let me tell you what is my perspective. What's the philosophy? My life philosophy. Uh, I'm greatly influenced by Da Vinci, the Renos, uh, the Renaissance guy, the original Renaissance man, and I feel you know I've I've read his autobiography. and after reading that i you know i understood that you can be a lot of things in life and you can be good at a lot of things in life this idea of you being a specialist and just doing one thing your entire entire life i am not a big fan of it i mean i very proudly say that i'm a jack of all trades and i'm a master of the few few trades not all of them but i'm a jack of all trades i can do anything because again it comes down to that attitude it really comes down to that attitude i feel that sportsman's attitude is a master key for most things in life most things because it when it when it really comes down to it anything and everything can be broken down into very small small pieces let's say i want to start a company in one go it seems like a lot of stuff but if you are to break down okay what is the first step what i have to do so uh, the trick is to make that process into very very small actionable steps extremely simple to understand so i feel that for me personally the hardest thing has been to uh, not being affected by your peers opinion like initially that was something that i really was struggling with because okay so uh, last year i i actually rapped i rapped a song like a rap song i, I wrote it and i actually performed it and you know when uh, that i came out uh, i put it on youtube as well so when it came out most of my friends were like what the fuck you i mean why would you do that 
like even people who are so close to me and uh, have been so supportive all along would like need us this is a little too much you're not you're not a rapper you you're not supposed to do these things but uh, you know something in me wanted to do that and i did that so i think initially for me the biggest biggest challenge was how should i express myself without the fear of being judged now i understand that people are going to judge you anyways man so you know what if you want to do a rap song you fucking go and do a rap song raj there's nobody in the world that can tell you anything and even if they do fuck them that everyone is entitled to their own opinion so uh, that is something that uh, you know initially i was facing like the the judgmental uh, or the criticism from others was something the anticipated criticism not even like the criticism the anticipation that oh these people might tell this or that like my mother or my father my friends now i'm like as much as i respect all of my people if this is if something i want to do i'm going to do it nonetheless even if i have to do it alone i'll do it i mean this is kind of this kind of approach really the entire generation i feel needs because most of people have this fear of being judged and they really back off so really thank you stating this on live television on live because people like me people like a lot of youngsters they really are afraid of being judged and this is the kind of approach that we all need so lastly you want to say something to all the fans all the viewers that are watching you supporting you during the tough times of covid anything you want to say about like about your life inspiring them like you really did inspire me honestly because i always had this fear of being judged and right now if i really want to write a rap song i won't i will just write it down and i will go ahead so anything you want to say to the viewers uh you know on on a parting parting lines without being preachy okay i have been hustling all my life honestly and apprentice was something which happened to me but you know what when that opportunity came i was ready for it and i was ready for it because of the n number of things that i have done before and i have failed at and i feel that if if anything if if you take away anything from my story it should be that you're going to fail at most of the things in your life i mean i have failed at most of the things in my life but that being said every now and then you will get the opportunity but at that time the question is are you ready for it have you prepared for it so keep hustling keep keep figuring things out man opportunity will come it's it's not a it's not a question of will i get the opportunity or not everyone will get the opportunity i am a staunch staunch believer of that if you keep working opportunity is just around the corner the question is are you going to be ready when that opportunity comes so definitely man this is something that i'm a very strong believer of and i tell this to everyone that just keep working keep working uh, everything else is going to take care of itself there is no substitute to good old work that's it thank you so much for sharing so many things about your life actually inspiring the people who are really watching this show we have all your support and love for you the entire india is really thank you your efforts right now and we hope you you win the show and bring the mma content down to india till then stay safe That's stay right. well and thank you so much thank you so much for joining you too you too raj thanks raj thank you raj thank thanks you so raj. much have a good day be safe take care thank you Okay guys thank you bye raj thank you bye bye nice talking to you